basic research, I think, is very important because it allows us to get the building blocks that allows for applications, whether they're applications as far as engineering is going or biotechnology or applied to medicine, we need to have the information first in which to build on. People have often talked about these days of uh, in medicine of translational medicine, of translating what's learned in the laboratory into work uh, that will apply to cures or preventive measures, bringing it to the bedside. And that's an important thing to do. But of course, you have to have something to translate first. And that's where the study of basic problems of biology, which is what I'm mainly interested in, is very important. Enrico Fermi had this wonderful line that went, if you do an experiment and it confirms your hypothesis, then you've made a measurement. But if you do the experiment and it doesn't confirm your hypothesis, you've made a discovery. I have some terrific graduate students and postdocs and undergraduates that work in the lab, and they're all making discoveries. And as they discover things, I'm interacting with them, we're all asking questions of each other, and it's really this group effort, uh, this collaboration, that leads to uh, new insights. And we never actually know when the consequences of what we discover will have fruition or what those consequences will actually be. When Charles Towns in the 1950s worked on what became the laser, he was studying fundamental physical properties. He had no idea that what he was working on would eventually be used to allow us to have DVDs or CDs, or maybe even more importantly, to be able to have uh, various types of surgery now that have helped millions of people. It wasn't part of the consequences of what he was looking at, but they nonetheless did evolve. One of the things I like about being at Columbia or being at a university is the freedom that I have in my research. The university actually doesn't care what I work on. That may sound sort of cruel or uninterested, interested, but in fact, they give me the freedom to do my research. And if I am funded, I'm able to do research on what I think is important. Now, they want me to succeed, but they give me the freedom. This is different from working in industry, where if they decide a project may not be important for the company, they may stop it. Even if the research is going wonderfully, even if there are exciting new results, if the company is going in a different direction. Now, that doesn't happen in all companies, and there are places where people do have a lot of freedom. But I've particularly enjoyed the freedom that I have of working in a university because I make the decisions of where the research is going to go. That means I can make the mistakes, but it also means that I can pursue ideas as they occur to me. And I find that very rewarding. These days, there is, not only in the United States, but in many other countries, a, I, an idea that if we just put the money on this particular problem or that particular problem, then we will be able to solve that problem. And I think that's misguided. I think that what one needs is to take a multi-pronged approach. You have to be able to go after directed research, looking at particular problems, but you also have to have this background research that will give the insights that will then allow us to be able to actually have new approaches to solving disease-related problems, for example, or other issues. I think that's the really important thing is that to say we only want to use the applied research or the, or the directed research uh, really uh, somewhat assumes that we actually know everything already, that we actually have the background, that, and that we don't have to learn anymore. But the fact of the matter is every year we learn more things that we had no idea were existing before. They give us new approaches to look at problems that we would really like to solve.